In this presentation, we will build a statement of cash flows using the direct method. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. We're going to have our information on the left side. We're going to build our worksheet with that information and then create our statement of cash flows from this worksheet. We're going to use a step-by-step -step process to create the statement of cash flows designed to minimize the amount of errors that we have. Like a balance sheet, a statement of cash flows is one of those types of statements that we can get to the end of it, see that it doesn't tie out the way we want, and not know where to go from there. What we want to do is avoid that problem by making step-by-step -step checkpoints along the way so that if we run into problems, we don't basically have to start over again that's going to be part of the design of putting together the statement of cash flows. On the left side, our information, we have a comparative balance sheet, which means we have a balance sheet for two periods. We're going to be in the current period here and the prior period. That's typically going to be necessary no matter what type of cash flow we're making, whether it be direct or indirect. We typically want a comparative balance sheet, a balance sheet with two time periods. That's the primary tool that we are going to be using to make our worksheet, which we will do this time then we're going to have our income statement so these are going to be the financial statements of course up to this point that we created from the adjusted trial balance and then we typically have some other information that we're going to have here now this is going to be given to us in a question like this kind of like a book question type style we'll just give the added information we'll talk about in practice what would happen in practice where would we get this information in practice and generally we would kind of know this stuff and look into it in terms of breaking down the detail and the general ledgers. So once we get into this, we'll talk more about this. We'll, we'll go through this in a step-by-step -step process, however, first making the worksheet that we're going to use. And to make the worksheet for a direct method, it's going to be a little bit different than we did with the indirect method. We're going to use a component of the income statement as opposed to just having the uh, comparative balance sheet. But we'll start off in the same kind of way here. Uh, many people, when they do a statement of cash flows, they may just take the comparative balance sheet and just add another column and have the difference between them. I like to actually put this into a new worksheet and basically convert it back into a debit and credit format because uh, logistically that just makes it easier. It makes everything flow better once we set this process up a few times. It's also really good practice. A statement of cash flows is a good practice because it allows us to in some ways deconstruct some things and see how things are put together so that's really good for just learning accounting so even if we're not going to be doing statement of cash flows all the time uh, if we can put one together we we'll really have a pretty good understanding of what's going on because we have to do some deconstruction and work backwards in order to to make this happen and uh, that helps to understand things so what we're going to do is we're going to take this balance sheet we're going to put that into our worksheet here and we're going to do the same thing that's over here. It's going to go line by line, but we're going to convert it from a plus and minus format, as is the case for financial statements, back to a debit and credit format. So we're kind of doing the opposite of what we did when we made the financial statement. And in doing so, we're going to eliminate some of these subcategories we don't need when we're putting this together. We're not going to have assets or current assets or property plants and equipment or uh, total current assets here. We're gonna eliminate those and just simplify this process back to just basically a trial balance. We're gonna do that for the two periods, just like we have here, and then we'll subtract out the two and we'll have the difference. And that's really what we're looking for. So we're just gonna do this line by line. I'm just gonna say that, uh, you know, the first one is just gonna be cash. We're just gonna pull this over line by line. You can type these in here, and uh, it might be better to actually go through here if you wanna go faster and type out the accounts first, and then enter the numbers. I'm gonna do them line by line uh, across so that we can see the data and where it's coming from more easily. So there's a difference between how fast we wanna do this and how much we wanna understand it. So if we wanna understand it well, better to do line by line going across. If you wanna do it as fast as possible, probably better to type in all the accounts, then type in column by column each number. Okay, so the cash for 2000X5 is going to be the 1312345 tab, and then 61550. And then we're going to take the difference between these two. And when we take the difference, I'm going to take uh, the current year minus uh, the prior year. So it's going to be equal 
I'm going to take 2000x5 minus the 2000x4. And so that difference then represents it increasing for the asset. Now note that I've, this is going to be a debit for us now. So we're going to have to deal with that issue we have to deal with whenever we convert from plus and minus to debit and credit. This is going to be for us debits and credits because that'll make an easy check figure for us uh, that we can then just be sure that we're in good, we're in balance. And that'll make it easier for us to then just convert this, just another puzzle to just change the formatting of it to get to a cash flow statement. Okay, so we're going to do the same for accounts receivable. So accounts receivable will be the next item here. And the amounts there are going to be the 771, 80, 550, and we'll subtract this out, equals this number minus this number. Now, again, that one, of course, went from, went down. So this is a debit and a credit, and it went down with that item. So then we're going to go to inventory. So inventory we had here. It's going to be the 246 and the 257. We'll subtract those out. This number minus this number equals uh, this cell C5 minus D5. And that'll give us the 10,100. And then we'll go to prepaid expense. Prepaid expenses, 15,100, 17. Subtract those out. Now, if this something that goes, goes wrong and we're not in balance, that's okay because we're going to sum this up just as we will with any kind of trial balance and go fix any problems that we have. So if I mess something up, then I'll, I'll go back and fix it here. So there we have that. Now we're going to skip the total current assets. We don't need this. That's that's We're going to put it back into a plus and minus or a debit and credit format from a plus and minus format. So the next component is going to be equipment. So it's within property, plant, and equipment. Equipment. And that's going to be the 262, 250, and the 200. And we'll... So now Excel's starting to remember the formula and it did it for me there. So it just did the, the math there, which is nice. I'll let Excel do that. And so then we got accumulated depreciation. So we'll pull this over. Now this is going to be a bit tricky. Note that here it's a positive number, but over here it's going to be a credit because it's a contra asset. So we're going to have to do that conversion again. So I'm going to represent credits with a negative number here so that it'll be debits minus the credits will equal zero and that'll be our check figure. So this is going to be uh, 110750 and this is going to be a credit negative 95. And now we'll do the same math. It's subtracting these two out. We can see from this year to this year, of course, it went up, but it went up in the credit direction. So we just got to get we got to get used to the which way things are going. And there's no getting around that uh, when we're working with debits and credits or the math of plus and minus. We got to know which way things are going, either using the accounting equation or debits and credits. It's easier once we set up the system to do it this way with debits and credits uh, within Excel because then everything will kind of go the same way. And I, I hopefully I'll you know be able to prove that to you as we go. And then I'll try to abbreviate uh, accumulated depreciation here. Our next item, if we scroll down, we're going to skip these subtotals again. No subtotal, no liabilities, no current liabilities. We're going to go down to accounts payable. So accounts payable is our next item. And we'll tab through there and we're going to pick up this uh, credit once again, 1750. So we're picking up this, flipping the sign because it's a liability which has a credit and a credit of 102. And so if we subtract those out, we get uh, the 100,250. So it, could, it went way down, but it went down in the debit direction. So the difference is decreased in the debit direction. Then we've got short-term notes payable. So short-term notes payable, our next item. And once again, that's going to be a liability. So it's credit 15,010. So there we have that difference of 14. It went from 1,000 up to 14 increase in the credit direction. And then we're not going to have the current liabilities. We're going to have the uh, total current liabilities as a subtotal. And then long-term notes payable. So we want long-term notes payable. This will be our next item. And if we scroll through here, the long-term is going to be the 100 credit 100,000 and credit 775. And the difference being the 22.5. And then again, we're not going to put total liabilities. We're going to go down to equity now. So we want common stock. So that's going to be our next item, common stock. And that's going to be a credit, 215 and 200. So 
215 and 200 and it's a it's a credit to because it's an equity account and then we got uh, paid in capital so let's we'll just call it paid in capital and we're gonna say that that's going to be for the 30,000 and zero so that's an increase of 30,000 that's also a credit credit balance accounts and then of course retained earnings retained earnings now here's where things are going to get a little bit tricky if i put the retained earnings here that's on the balance sheet of course 230 and 125 credit 230,000 and 125 credit 125 then you would think uh, we should be in balance there. So we're out of balance right now. Let's go back through. I'm gonna check and see where uh, where the problem is. So I'm just gonna go through these and check these off. And note, if I get down to accounts payable here, there's where the problem is. And that's the point of putting it in, into a debit and credit format. We have the double entry accounting system. It's gonna tell us something's wrong there. And I, I have another seven. I missed a seven. So I'm just gonna double click, add a seven. So now this one is in balance. Now we'll take a look at the 9,500. And there's a similar thing here where we got the short-term uh, notes payable. Short-term notes payable should be the 10,000. It's here 1,000. So that's the point of the double entry accounting system. We're gonna put a zero. And that is gonna help us to make sure that our worksheet here is gonna be in balance. So now we're looking for another 500. We're off 500. And that's gonna be our retained earnings. So retained earnings was 225,500. So I'm just gonna double click here and add that 500. Okay, so that gives us something in balance. That gives us a pretty good indication that our worksheet is working now. Now we're gonna add one more twist to this worksheet. This is what we would use in an indirect method. We're gonna add one more twist here because um, what we wanna do is break out this retained earnings because when we look at uh, into the income statement components of it, uh, because we're gonna use those temporary accounts in order to create the uh, the operating section of the statement of cash flows. So again, this is another way that we're going to kind of have to deconstruct these financial statements back to a trial balance, so that we have a worksheet that's easiest to use, and that's a good practice for us. So how do I get? The, I mean, how can I put this income statement into my worksheet? I want to see the income statement just for 2000 X5 not for 2000x4 because the income statement was closed out to retained earnings and that's fine but we want to see the activity in 2000x5 this 230,000 of retained earnings is kind of lumping in all the activity that happened on the income statement and that's kind of fine for the indirect method where we're going to kind of back into the activity using net income but for the direct method it would be nice to see the line items for the income statement so how can we do that well uh, retained earnings, if this is retained earnings at the end of last time period, then that should be the beginning balance at the end of this time period. So we're basically going to be kind of deconstructing the statement of owner's equity here. We're going to say, well, this would be the retained earnings in the post-closing trial balance, which means that at the beginning of the year, it would have been at the same balance at the end of the prior year. So this 230, if I make this 125, and then I just add the income statement accounts that I'm just going to add these accounts, which is the detail to the equity section, because this 158, 100 was closed out to retained earnings. And I close out any dividends, which we're saying here, there were dividends of uh, 50, 53, 600. That's what would be constructing the retained earnings. So in practice, of course, what we could do is look at retained earnings, the GL, see if there's any activity other than the closing out of net income at the end of the time period, such as dividends. And then we're going to, and then we would break that out. We can break that out in our worksheet. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to put the dividends first and say, say we're out of balance, but I should be able to reconstruct this 104, 500 with the temporary accounts. So we're going to start with dividends. That's a debit balance account, a contra equity account, 53, 600. And then we'll just go through the income statement. So I'm just going to go through the income statement, and add the income statement accounts. So I, all I'm doing is sales, cost, goods sold, depreciation, other expenses, loss, uh, income before taxes, uh, income taxes. We should get to that uh, 158, 100. So I'm just going to add these numbers here now. So I'm just adding those numbers, which was a credit for sales, 1185. 
Cost of goods sold, 595, 386, and 362, 850, 21, 28, 350. And there we have it. So if we look at the debits and credits, the sales minus or uh, minus all the expenses is going to give us 158, 100 here, 158, 100. So there's net income. And then we have the, the draws and of course now we're back in balance so that's what we're looking for and now we're just going to carry this formula down it didn't finish this formula because excel didn't see the other side of it so it didn't predict that that's what we want as it has been doing so now we're just going to continue this same thing we're just going to say this equals this number minus this number just as we've been doing all the way down and we could just copy this down so i'm going to put my cursor on autofill and just autofill this all the way down so there we have that. Now we're just subtracting these out all the way down. And uh, that's what we're going to have here. So the only confusing thing about this worksheet, or there's a few confusing things, but we're, we're basically making the financial statements and, like I said, deconstructing them to back to a trial balance. And we're taking the balance sheet as we do for a uh, indirect method and making it into a trial balance just with the balance sheet, like a post-closing trial balance. But now we're, we're basically reconstructing the adjusted trial balance here by, um, by, then, by then breaking out the temporary accounts. Now, of course, if we, had, when, if we had the adjusted trial balance, if we used that to create the financial statements, we could then use that. Uh, or if we just have the financial statements before, then we can recreate it, which is a good practice to do anyways, because, again, it kind of makes us go the other way to deconstruct the financial statements. So now we're going to have this. This is going to be our tool now that we're going to use to create the uh, statement of cash flows. And we'll, we'll discuss how to go through that. We're going to go through those in a kind of a step-by-step -step process. We'll do these uh, cash flows from operations, then uh, from investing activities, and then financing activities. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.